Hello and welcome to this episode of Essential Friends, where we looked at Christians from the past to help us grow in faith today. Uh, so Paul, this is our fourth episode on Henry Skugel's Life of God and the Soul of Man. Could you give us a recap of what we studied so far? Sure, sure. So we started with uh, Henry Skugel's comparison to what people often think Christianity is and what Christianity actually is. We saw that the false understanding or or really the, the marks that people say, well, that is Christianity, uh, is three things. First of all, people say, well, if you have a correct understanding of doctrine, then you're truly a Christian. Or if you have correct behavior externally, good moral behavior, you're truly a Christian. Or if you have passionate emotions, you're truly a Christian. And Henry Skugel was not denying these things, that they're Christian, but he was saying those things in themselves don't make uh, a person a Christian. And so then he went to explain uh, what the Christian really is, and he explained it by a divine life, or as the title of the book goes, the life of God in the soul of men. Mm-hmm. By life, Henry Skugel, as we saw, I think two episodes ago, uh, Henry Skugel defines it as the inward, free, and self-moving principle. Mm-hmm. It's not something that we try to press upon ourselves, but it is a free walking and really guiding of the Holy Spirit within us. And then uh, last time we saw divine, uh, how Henry Skugel means uh, by that is not only that it comes from God, but it's a resemblance of God's divine nature stamped upon our heart, uh, as it were, or as uh, the book of Hebrews quotes from Jeremiah, Mm -hmm. that the law of God is written upon our hearts, Mm -hmm. right? It's God's character coming through. And I think we closed last time in in a summary of, of what that means. Very good. And last time you also explained about what the fruit of faith is. And you mentioned that's in four parts, which God becomes visible through the Christian's life. It's through true love to God, true charity to man, true purity, and true humility. And so let's just take some time to unpack each of those. So what does what does Skugel mean by true love to God? Right. So I'll begin with his quote. He writes, the love of God is a delightful and affectionate sense of the divine perfections, which makes the soul resign and sacrifice itself wholly unto him, desiring above all things to please him and delighting in nothing so much as in fellowship and communion with him and being ready to do or suffer anything for his sake or at his pleasure. I think there's a few things we should note. It begins with a delightful and affectionate sense, affectionate sense of the divine perfections. In other words, it springs from the heart. It's a delight of the heart. Mm. It's not a looking at it, I should love this, but it's it's the joy mm. that comes out of the heart. Mm-hmm. Right? And and I mean we have all of this. I, I know you're married and I'm married. And mm. when you fall in love with your wife, there is not a I need to love her, yeah, right. right? There's a delight in yeah. her. There's a delight in, in, in seeing her beauty and, and there's a longing to be with her. There's a longing to speak to her. Yeah. And that's what love to, to someone else is and, and especially also love towards God. But of course, in a love towards God, it's the love mm. of life. Mm-hmm. It goes even beyond the love um, of a spouse. It's a love that, that, that rules yeah. the life. And then he goes on, he says, uh, this, this love makes the soul resign mm-hmm. and sacrifice itself wholly unto him. In other words, this love has an impact. It's not just an emotion that, that comes out of this delight in God, but there's a resignation or a sacrifice, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When, when uh, I know that you just had a baby girl as a mm-hmm. daughter, you sacrifice for her because mm-hmm. you love her. Yeah. Right? There's a, a willingness to sacrifice. Well, unto God, it's, it's a complete desire to do whatever He desires. Mm. Right? That's this, this love towards God. Mm-hmm. Thirdly, he says, delighting in nothing so much as in fellowship and communion with Him. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's that drawing toward God, that uh, love towards God has the effect that we long to pray, yeah. that we long to read the Bible because we meet God. Yeah. Right? There's a, and I think the, the reason what we need to really point out here is the reality. Mm-hmm. Right? That it's real. It's not something taught or or instructed. It flows out of the desire of the heart because we we have seen God through the Spirit. Yeah. And the last thing I'll I'll point out here is being ready to do or suffer anything for him. Mm-hmm. In other words, the limitations of uh, human religion is we'll do as much as we think God requires of us. Yeah. Right? We'll we'll get the bare minimum to pass. But then I got to have the rest of my life for myself. 
The true Christian life is totally different. Mm-hmm. Right? The true Christian mm-hmm. life is, God, what do you long for me? And even though that's, that's yeah. I'm sure Henry Skugel would agree, that's not a perfect sense every single day, that there's never a point where, where we need to sacrifice more as though right. we're always on our max. But as a whole, the, hearts, the heart of a Christian, out of the love for God, is resigned to do whatever God desires. Yeah. Great. And so let's unpack the next one. What does Skugel mm-hmm. mean by charity to man? So I'll, I'll have another bit of a lengthy quote. Um, a love toward all mankind in a sincere and unbounded affection because of the relation they have to God, being as creatures and having something of his image stamped upon them. Mm-hmm. All the parts of justice, all the duties we owe to our neighbor are eminently comprehended. For he doth truly love all the world, will be nearly concerned in the interest of everyone and so far from wronging or injuring any person that he will resent any evil that befalls others as if it happened to himself. So a love towards others, uh, Jesus spoke about this, mm. right? The uh, sinners love sinners. Right. And sinners love those who love them, yeah. right? But God calls or Christ calls his people not only to love their friends, but to love their enemies. Yeah. That's what the love of God does in the heart. Yeah. It's a love to all mankind, to our friends as well as our enemies. As God causes the sun to go upon the righteous and the evil, so the the Christian lets the sun of his love shine upon the righteous and the evil alike. And then it says that all the parts of justice, all the duties we owe to our neighbor are eminently Hmm. comprehended. In other words, believers treat others justly because God is just and he becomes careful to help hmm. others and to, to strengthen others hmm. so there is no what Google basically is saying is you can't be a christian and not love or care for your neighbors mm-hmm. right if you have a christian who mm-hmm. who says he's a believer but then really lives for himself careless of the needs of others mm-hmm. the love of god is not in him yeah so of course we read that in scripture as well how yeah. can the love of god be in the one who says to a person who is hungry, be be blessed, be hungry, be well fed, and right. doesn't give him the food. Right. Right. So the love of God causes a person to to stand in. Yeah. And lastly, he points out that he's so far from wronging or injuring any person that he will resent any evil that befalls others as if it happened to himself. Mm. In other words, he loves his neighbor as himself, right? Mm-hmm. That's what what Skugel is echoing. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, mm-hmm. right? The, mm-hmm. the two greatest commandments, to yeah. love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself, that's exactly what the Spirit of God works yeah. in our hearts. Yeah, amen. The first two great commandments. And then Skugel goes on and he talks about purity. Mm-hmm. So can you unpack what, what he's talking about there? Yeah, so um, there's a, a lengthy quote once again. I'm pretty much reading the whole book for people. <laughs> I understand a due abstractness from the body and mastery over the inferior appetites, or such a temper and disposition of mind as makes a man despise and abstain from all pleasures and delights of fancy, a sense or fancy, which are sinful in themselves or tend to extinguish or lessen our relish of more divine and intellectual pleasures, which doth also infer a resoluteness to undergo all those hardships he may meet within the performance of his duty, so that not only hasty and temperance, hasty, uh, hasty, hasty and temperance, but also Christian courage and magnanimity may come under his head. I'd just like to point out one thing in this quote, it says that um, purity makes a man despise or abstain everything that is sinful. Mm-hmm. Obviously, right. right? We want to be pure from sin, but also uh, anything that, ex- that tends to exten- extinguish or lessen our relish of divine pleasures, mm. right? In other words, mm. um, you could technically live a Christian life um, in words or in writing where you spend 24 seven, either sleeping or uh, entertainment that is not per se sinful, mm-hmm. right? Let's take a sport. You can do sports, so mm-hmm. to speak, uh, 10 hours a day, mm-hmm. eat and sleep and don't do anything else. Mm-hmm. And Google says, no, the, the, the purity in heart causes a person to, 
to take everything in life, both the things that are sinful and the things that that diminish spiritual pleasures. Mm. And and he focuses his life, he purifies his life in such a way that everything in his life tends to make him pure before God. Mm. Now, I think as a mm. side note, um, I don't think that means that we cannot do any type of entertainment that is not sinful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it does speak to us today mm-hmm. that we have a tendency to over... Uh, extend that privilege or, or possibility right. that we spend a lot of time um, in entertainment that is not necessarily sinful and therefore our our desire for God might be diminished. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the singular in heart. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. And there's so much there. Uh, I'd love to keep unpacking that, but let's move on to the next thing. What does Google mean by humility? Yeah, so um, he says this is a little bit of a shorter quote. Humility imports a deep sense of our own meanness with hearty and affectionate acknowledgments of our owing all that we are to the divine bounty, which is always accompanied with a profound submission to the will of God and great deadness toward the glory of the world and applause of men. So in other words, it's a recognition of our littleness mm-hmm. and God's greatness, mm-hmm. right? And I think he's he's countering the false idea of humility that um, that can sometimes be described as depression, mm. right? Be, yeah. Because depression um, can often be centered on on me and what I am and what I am not. Uh-huh. And he says we're yeah. not we're not supposed to, supposed to go in there and just look at ourselves and just feel and try to see how small we are or try to, to find out everything of our own smallness and just stay there. Yeah. He says we it, it comes really in the light of seeing God. Yeah. Right? Because you can still be fully focused on yourself mm-hmm. and be and think very little of yourself. Mm-hmm. But what Skugo is, is putting, he's putting these two things together and he's saying it's humility brings a deep sense of our own small the smallness, but in light of the greatness of God. Yeah. Right. And so uh, this affects the believer's relationship with God because it makes us submit to him. If you think about this, if you are small intellectually, Mm -hmm. uh, in your love, in your willpower, in your knowledge, um, if you're small in that, but you see that God is great, then you're going to submit to whatever he says. Mm -hmm. Right. So it it causes us to to um, to really follow. Yeah. Follow God. Humility causes a person to to follow what God says, yeah. and so I think the the key of this Christian life, what what Henry Skugel writes, is that self is no longer the center, mm-hmm. the world is no longer the center, but God is the center, and out of God's love and God's character, the whole life of the Christian is is led, guided, and fed. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. thank you for unpacking. What are the the fruit, the fruit of faith, as Skugel uh, outlines it in those four headings. And so I appreciate your time and appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Essential Friends, where we look to Christians in the past to grow in our faith today. It's with Paul Van Anglen Hoven. My name is Bram Bernard. Look forward to joining you next time. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>